What's up, YTPC? It's Big John coming back at you, baby. I just wanted to post a little video tonight, have a little chat with you guys. Just sit back and chill and have a little bit of a smoke. I wanted to share um, just some of the age tens that I've been able to pick up at the pipe shows as of as of late. Um, was able to pick up a couple of nice tins of tobacco at uh, KC and uh, a tin that I actually picked up in St. Louis. Wanted to share that with you guys and have a little bit of smoke and just a little bit of a chat. Housekeeping. Smoking on my Alexander. A little bit of a Danish brandy inspired awesomeness. With a little bit of this excellently aged Esoterica Dunbar. Old, old tin. Nothing on the back. Old, old tin. Is just absolutely still one of the funnest things about this hobby this lifestyle that I love you know not to sound snobbish or elitish but uh, I've been really fortunate to run across so many great tobaccos and have the opportunity to smoke them and share them a lot of times some of these old tins will bounce around from show to show or bounce around the internet bounce around eBay and it's sad that they never get popped and they, that they never get enjoyed still a little wet on me I mean, that Dunbar is smoky. Mm. And it's sweet. And just malty with that Perique. Like I said, I'm not a big esoterica dating person. On the bottom of the tin, it says 673. I know at the top it says blended exclusively for esoteric uh, tabacchiana. So pre Orango. I don't know if that was 07 or whatnot, but I know it's a really old label. And when I seen the tin, a couple of us were walking around the show and kind of caught our eye. And in the right pipe. It's absolutely beautiful. But man, I'm just chilling tonight. Just sitting back. Thought I would share with you guys a little bit and show you. A couple of things, a couple of age tens that I've been able to uh, purchase and pick up and open them up and show them to you. Hey, what's up, guys? I just wanted to share with you a little bit <clears throat> um, some of the tens that I have found 
at the pipe shows, um, going through aisle upon aisle, trying to find a, a good deal, you definitely have to hunt a little bit within the pipe shows, but every once in a while you can come across something that, number one, you haven't seen before, or two, has some really great age on it, especially something that you might not have tried before. So um, in all three of these cases with the Brinley's English, Brinley's traditional English modeled flake, I had never seen it before, didn't know anything about it, and it was something that I was like, oh, kind of looks like Penzance. Might want to try it. Then the older tin of Dunbar that I found in KC, still have no clue on the actual date of this. I'm going to show you guys this tobacco. It has that little ring around there, 673, no ideal exclusively for Esoterica Tabacchiana. So not a Rango or anything else like that. Old, old label. And then the other one was something I've been wanting to try, which is the Solani Silver Flake. Now all these tobaccos have been open. We're not going to hear the, the nice hiss out of anything, but I just wanted to share with you what I've been smoking lately and some of the things and just if you're out and about, you see something, you can see what it's what it's working with on the inside. Tangy and pungent red ripe Virginias and dark fired Kentucky. This tends from 07 and it is absolutely beautiful. And I'm telling you what. Uh, they say no football, no problem on TBS. Well, no McClellan's, no problem. Look at these flake chunks. I mean, mm, it's just malty and sweet. And it's got that pungent odor. Just absolutely beautiful tobacco. <laughs> I mean, it is absolutely amazing. So, if you're interested in some Solani Silver Flake, it comes in a, in a like a almost like a Esoterica bag on the inside of this. Like, obviously, busted that open and cut that away. But this Solani Silver Flake with a couple of years age on it is absolutely beautiful beautiful stuff so don't hesitate in buying it at the pipe show I believe I paid 25 bucks for this tin and considering that a brand new tin of this costs I think about 25 bucks I think I got a pretty good deal so Solani Silver Flake you see it out there go to a pipe show or whatnot check it out good stuff good stuff now let's go to the Dunbar. And I would like for anybody that knows more about Esoterica than myself to maybe chime in because we smoked a round of this, popped it open with uh, Alexander or Alex Hasty, pipe maker at the KC Pipe Show. And uh, we popped this open with all the boys down there and uh, had, a, had a real good smoke off of it. But I'll let you guys see it and uh, see what she's working with here. So, like I said, she's already popped open. But, <laughs> look. And this is with about seven or eight bowls taken out of it. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Look at that paper get this fluffed up a little bit here yeah. if you're a fan of Esoterica Dunbar well baby eat your heart out I mean come on the Virginias are aged nice and smooth and sweet 
little sugar crystals all over there just real pretty pretty flake chunks and I mean you got pieces like that bad boy right there I hope I can get that for you check out that this is the type of stuff that you can find around at the pipe show for not too much it's not too bad I think I spent 40 bucks for this tin which to me was a was a good buy um, well-aged tin of tobacco of something that I do believe I've tried Dunbar before but uh, I haven't had Dunbar like this this is Dunbar on steroids so all the more reason you get a chance get to a pipe show or get to a spot that has some real nice aged tobaccos it makes it definitely worth your while now this Brindley's English I actually got down in St. Louis and I haven't found out very much about it besides that they made the Brindley's English traditional slices and they made a navy flake and I think they had a plug. Um, I've seen these go on eBay and a couple of the pipe resale spots for upwards of $200 a piece. Um, I was sitting around one night and I, I got this tin actually for I want to say like 25 bucks. Absolute steal. I have no clue on the date on it. It definitely is probably from the 60s or 70s. some Somewhere around in there. And uh, I was able to get the tin and I'm not about letting something go that I might not ever see again. So I popped it and I've shared it with uh, many of friends this stuff if you've ever had old old Penzance it's very similar to very old Penzance with a Lakeland topping and as you can see I'm running out quickly because it is darn good but this is a real pretty an interesting tobacco it's an old style modeled flake and it's it's a little dry but that's okay it it smokes just fine like this but it is absolutely beautiful like I said it's like Penzance with a little Lakeland topping so those are the three that I wanted to show you tonight and uh, we'll smoke a little bit of that uh, We'll smoke a little bit of this Dunbar tonight and uh, I'll get back with you. It's always a, a wonder when dealing in a lot of aged tobaccos. I know over the course of when I started this channel, um, I've tried, you know, old 40 year old cigarettes. I've tried, um, different tobaccos from the 20s and the 30s and the things like that and it's always a wonder it's like man should I should I be trying this should I be smoking this you know I just paid you know good money for this tin of tobacco am I gonna open it up is it gonna be full of mold or whatnot it's always a crapshoot with uh, some aged tins um, like the Solani Silver Flake um, is the bag that's inside of this going to still be sealed up good? Um, is it going to be all dried out inside of here? Were there pinholes inside of it? Because sometimes in tins like this, you know, they had just are sealed up and folded. So you never quite know what you're getting into. But it's, uh, it's part of the hunt. You know? It's the the thrill of the chase so to speak sitting back chilling having a good drink drinking on some bullet 12 year by the way absolutely beautiful rye like to hang out on house party and chill out with some guys in the pipe community 
to share our thoughts of the day. A lot of people are talking about the the BRTV and whatnot and where that's going to go and where that's going to lead. And, you know, I definitely don't have all the the answers to that. I'm happy that you know, Phil seen it in me to to do the cigars and have my cigar channel on there and I hope you guys tune in for that. I'm really excited about that. I'm really excited to dig deeper into cigars. Because frankly, I mean, I told Phil when we kind of first started talking about this that, you know, I've been smoking cigars for a good amount of time, but there's so many other guys out there that are just so, even for me, I fanboy out on Cigar Obsession and Lee Mack and, I mean, all those guys that have done tons of reviews and have tons of knowledge on cigars. Now, I've, I've been a cigar smoker for, for a good amount of time, but I wouldn't say that it's my forte as, as something that, you know, I would be known for. A lot of people uh, that have been around me or watch my videos know that I, I, I love whiskeys. I, I do have a pretty good knowledge about it. Do I know everything? No. Heck no. I think once you declare that you know everything about something, that's when the learning stops. But the cool part about having a cigar channel on BRTV is going to be the fact that I'm going to be able to learn more and push myself to learn new facets about such a beautiful thing as smoking a cigar and maybe come out with a little bit more appreciation and hopefully be able to spread some good quality knowledge with everybody in the YTPC and the people that you know subscribe and come over to BRTV so I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a really cool thing. And definitely, you get a chance to support it because it's our thing. There's there's no if and buts about it. Without the YTPC coming through and showing out and showing up, it's uh it's not going to survive. Uh, you folks out there that watch my channel that support me and the folks that support all the other presenters that are going to be on there is is what's going to make or break it to be honest with you and uh, I appreciate everybody that watches my videos and I try to get better as I go along and try to learn more every opportunity I take to uh, learn more about this hobby, learn more about this lifestyle, just, it, you know, it seems to enrich my life because learning something about a pipe, you know, you seem to learn a little something about life. Taking it easy, being a thoughtful person. Rolling with the punches. It's a beautiful thing. And as my man Smokey Mo always says, is how are we living, fellas and ladies? I mean, how are we living right now? Smoking some of the best tobaccos in the world. And what's the best tobacco in the world? Whatever you got in your pipe. 
whether it be an OTC or Esoterica or whatnot, whatever smokes good for you, man. Whatever trips your trigger. Sitting back, enjoying your drink of choice, and having a good time. That's it. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. I love making videos. Although I'm not the... I, I never have considered myself the most eloquent of speakers. And I might not be able to uh, <clears throat> always get what's up here to come across in a <laughs> good manner at all times. And I'm hard-headed. I'm not perfect at all whatsoever. But I enjoy tobacco. Definitely have enjoyed a ton of premium cigars lately. And I enjoy your company. It's a really cool deal. Let's keep this thing alive and let's support one another within the YTPC even going into BRTV and let's make it so hey we get even more people on over there like I said uh, in my in my last video I didn't feel and nobody's made me you know I've watched the several videos and nobody's made me feel you know like I shouldn't be a part of it or anything else like that I'm not even trying to go there or start any drama or anything like that so please if it sounds like that don't take it that way but I know I feel that there's so many great presenters out there and it's it's so hard and the fact that you know I was pick it, it, it was absolutely humbling. Like I said, I still want to keep that chip on my shoulder mentality going into everything because I want to stay hungry. I want to learn. And I want to learn more. I've got some great mentors in the pipe community right now. A group of guys that are teaching me more about artisan pipes. I'm learning more more every day and I'm asking the questions and I think that's as a as a man to be able to humble yourself and to say that you know I don't know everything about something in this day and age speaks to the character of the person and with that and feeling like I'm a low man on the totem pole, so to speak, so to speak, as far as some of the bigger presenters out there. I mean, you've got your mutton chops and, you know, guys like that that are way bigger than my channel. But it's cool that I'm given this opportunity to expand and to learn more and definitely am I going to take it and run with it most definitely to learn something more about this lifestyle maybe to be able to help promote some of the smaller American businesses within this lifestyle whether it be t-shirt companies or small pipe sellers or anything else like that I can't speak for any other man I, you know that's not something I do but I know for me that's something that I'm going to definitely take into consideration with the platform that's been handed to me to be able to shout out somebody and say hey man go check out this guy's website you know somebody that by any other standard would, would not even have a chance to buy ad space anywhere 
or have the opportunity to even, you know, advertise in a tobacco friendly environment. Well, that's enough of my ramble. <laughs> just wanted to touch base with you guys and just kind of have a kind of a chilled laid back video. I'm going to let this Dun Dunbar, good God, I'm going to let this Dunbar take me on the bed. YTPC, I'm out. Y'all be safe. Peace.